Hi, I'm Danny. Welcome back to another video. In today's video, I'm going to go over the complete charging system and battery on my 2009 Honda Civic. The same procedure can be used for any other vehicle. I've done a couple other videos like this in the past, but I seem to still get a lot of questions. So in today's video, I'm going to address them issues. Let's get started. So we're going to do all these tests with just a multimeter. Um, this is kind of a fancy one, but you don't need a fancy one. You can do this with just a regular meter. The more you pay for a meter, the better the features are. Now, whenever you do electrical work, the first thing you're going to check is your battery. If you don't have the right voltage to start, it could mess up every other thing that you're trying to check. So first step, let's check the battery. All right, so to check the battery, all you have to do is you have to put the meter on voltage scale. Voltage DC looks like this. And if it's AC, it's got that line that's kind of squiggly. But DC is where you want to be. You want the black lead in the comm and the red lead in the voltage scale. And then with your meter leads, so these are actually pretty nice meter leads. Um, they actually unscrew and you can use it as a regular lead or you've got the alligator clip here and I'll put a link to these in the description just like everything else I use today I'll put it in the description so you'll take the black lead you'll put it on the black or the negative side the red lead on the red or the positive side and you're just going to read the voltage so 12.6 volts is a fully charged battery, and that's right about where we are, 12.6 volts. If your battery's reading was under 12 volts, I would charge the battery and rerun the test. Next, let's load that battery. Now we're gonna use the starter motor to do a load test on the battery. So the starter motor is gonna be your load. Now you can buy these tools that test your battery, but you don't have to as long as you have a meter and you do it the way I tell you to here. So you do need to get rid of your surface charge on the battery. And what that is, is if you just charge your battery, there's a little extra boosted charge in that battery, or you just drove your car. There's also a little bit of extra boost in that battery. So to do that, all we do is we turn on the fan motor and we turn on the lights for about 30 seconds. So I'm inside the car, I'm gonna turn the key on, I'm gonna turn the blower motor on, and then I'm gonna turn the lights on, and I'm gonna wait 30 seconds. Then what I need to do is I need to disable the fuel pump and I'll crank the starter. So the easiest way to disable the fuel pump is the fuel pump fuse. It's number two, it's a 15 amp. And if I come over here to the fuse box, and this is under the left side kick panel, here's the fuse, pull it out, and now the car won't start. Now I'll set up the meter to do a starter draw test. Remember I said earlier that the more you pay for a meter, the more functions you get? So on this meter, I have a min-max function. So what this is gonna do, it'll record the minimum reading and the maximum reading it sees. So to do a starter draw test, we're gonna start the engine using the starter and it's gonna draw the voltage that's in the battery as low as it can. So we don't wanna see anything below 9.6 volts. After we're done, we'll take a look at it and then we'll do an alternator test. Let's review the steps so far. I tested my battery to make sure I had a full charge. I removed any surface charge that was in my battery by turning on the blower motor and the headlights for 30 seconds. I also removed the fuel pump fuse so when I crank the engine, the engine doesn't start. I set up my meter to record min max. This allows me to capture the lowest voltage reading when the starter is cranking and loading that battery. The battery voltage should not go lower than 9.6 volts during the cranking process. If it does, 
the battery fails this test and a new battery needs to be installed. I have a couple videos on batteries and I'll link them in the description. Now, keep an eye on the meter as I crank the engine. Once I'm done, we'll go check out the min-max feature and I'll show you how that works. Now back at the meter, if I click min-max again, 12.52 was the highest, 10.2 was the lowest. So 10.2 is way above 9.6 volts, so my battery's good. Now I need to check the alternator to make sure it's putting out enough current to keep this battery charged under a load. To do that, I'm going to load the battery again. I'm going to turn on the blower motor. I'm going to turn on the headlamps. If you have electric seats, go ahead and turn those on. You're going to keep the leads in the same position and I'm going to set up my meter again on the min-max. I'm going to go inside the car. I'm going to run the car at 1500 RPMs and I want to see how much voltage this shows on this meter. And then we'll come back and we'll check out that min-max feature again. All right, so I'm going to turn on my ignition, turn on my blower. I need to turn on my lights. And then I'm gonna start my engine and rev it to about 1500 RPMs. Maybe about 2000, 1500. And I'm gonna look at my alternator to see if it's keeping up with the load demand on that battery. Now back at the meter, if I push the min-max button, it's going to show me the maximum voltage that this read. So even with the blower fan and the lights on, I'm still putting 14.6 voltage into this battery. So it's keeping up and adding juice into this battery. If this was 11.5 volts, then it would be undercharging. If this was 15.5 volts or more, it was overcharging this battery, and that would be a concern. There's one more check I can do on the alternator, and that's to check the diodes. So let's do that next. Bad diodes in your alternator can cause alternator whine, radio noise. It can also interfere with other sensitive electronic components, and it can even drain your car's battery. To check for a diode, the meter leads are going to stay in the same position, but the meter itself, you need to put it on the AC scale. Now, all I got to do is start the engine and my AC voltage needs to stay under a half a volt. If it's under a half a volt, my diodes and my alternator are good. Let's go do that now. Now, if you look at the voltage there, it's below my specification, but I found if you turn on the blower fan, you get a little bit more ripple in there. So just make sure that's below a half a volt. I'm good with my readings, so let's go on to our next test. Now I wanna show you how to check your alternator's current output using an amp clamp. So alternators all have an amp rating. This one on this car is probably 85 amps. If you had a big diesel truck that had heated seats, heated mirrors, you could get up to 400 amp alternator. And to check the amperage, you'll need an amp clamp. Let me show you how that works. So this is the amp clamp I'm gonna be using. It's not the preferred amp clamp because it only goes to 80 amps, but I can get away with it on this alternator because this alternator's only an 85 amp alternator and it's not going to be pulling 85 amps. It'll probably pull half of that um, loaded. So what you're going to look for is the fat single wire. So this one is here and I'm going to just put the amp clamp over it here. I'm going to go ahead and zero it out 
and then I'm going to start the vehicle. So it's not going to pull a whole lot of current until I turn on the lights and the fan motor. So here goes the lights. As you can see, it went up a little bit. And then when I pull the fan motor here, it pulls even more. Let me turn on the air conditioner. So as you can see, the more load you put on the battery, the more that current has to be put back into the battery. So if you had an alternator that was only putting out 10 amps, that wouldn't be enough, and that would be a bad alternator. Let me go ahead and lower the fan. And you see the current went down. Let me shut off the lights. And that's how alternators work. I was hoping to also add a parasitic draw test, how to check for one, and how to actually find the draw. But this video went way longer than I thought it would, and that'll be part of my next video. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in my next video. Don't wanna hold